Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have you Herr Robert vs Gonzo in game one of two games in the European Still Division League. So since the last two videos were quite popular I decided to continue with more uh, replays from the European Steel Division League and, and more than that replays of Gonzo because I know you guys on the channel definitely enjoy watching him play, uh, enjoy watching him, the strategies that he brings uh, to Steel Division and I personally quite enjoy it as well. So since he just played against Herobert, another top tier player, I thought these replays would be really interesting to watch and therefore I'm bringing them to you guys. Now today's map is Omaha and on the Allied side we see Herobert with the 2nd Armoured French and on the Axis side uh, Gonzo is using the 91st Luftlander which is a division that I don't think I've seen him use particularly often um, so that will be interesting for sure. Herobert however with his 2nd uh, Armoured it's a very nice division um, for phase A and B, it has a lot of strengths um, in its Shermans and also like in its M10s in the early game and can put a lot of pressure on because of that. M10s however on Omaha not really going to do too much work uh, because they can't exploit their 1200 meter range which is why they're so good. But moving into like the end of phase A into phase B, as soon as we start seeing like two star Shermans on the field, it's going to put a lot of pressure onto Gonzo's ground forces. And Gonzo will probably have to end up relying on his HS129s in order to maybe pick off some of that armor because it's going to be quite hard to deal with otherwise. So on the side of the 91st, of course, you do have the HS129s I already mentioned. You've got some pretty decent ground support units like the Stur 42s. A common strategy is to use like Ersatztruppen in front of your Stur 42s to just make like a solid push against uh, units that don't have AT. Um, then there's, of course, the Fortune Jaegers. You've got strong recon. Um, there's quite a, a good few strengths in the 91st and they're quite a well-rounded division. The only thing that they do lack of course is their tanks and um, that's something that Herobert could therefore maybe try and exploit um, midway through the game. But let's have a look at some of the units going down. it would be interesting to see what Gonzo is trying to do here. So he's got an AT gun on this top side, he's got some recon there with the command. He's got a few units of Ersatztruppen and Falschermiegers. I think it's going to be Quite common to see a lot of Urzats at the start of the game, especially on uh, Omaha since it's a lot of tree lines, there's a lot of places to hide infantry and therefore Urzats are quite cost efficient at holding the front line forwards. Then in the mid, yeah, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six units of Urzatstruppen plus a Falschim Jäger plus a, uh, another recon unit. These could be Falschim Panzer Abwehr or they could be Falschim Spear Troop. I think they get both. Um, so that could be the case. Either way, another AT gun on the bottom side with Forschermjägers and Command. Um, the Forschermjägers will actually deal with this defense quite well on this side of the town because they are, excel at like the 400 and, and 300 meter range. So any infantry that's trying to approach this area will definitely get mowed down very quickly by uh, Forschermjägers. Over on the side of Herobert, on the top side, we do see a M8. Um, that is going to certainly be helpful. We have a unit of voltages or two. There's also, I think, flamethrowers and a command infantry there. Further down, it's going to be some flamethrowers. There's also a bazooka team. Then on the bottom side, it's two units of voltages. There's going to be more flamethrowers, the command infantry, and the M5A1. And at the start, a Piper Cub, which is an interesting start for the second armoured because he doesn't have too much on the ground that can really exploit that early on. So that's really interesting. But either way, Gonzo unloading with a pack 40 at the start. That's going to be trying to cover this main road into the town. It has taken cover just on the edge of this orchard, so that's going to be a really smart placement of that. However, it will be spotted by the Piper Cub, so it's unlikely that uh, Herr Robert's going to go into that. Either way, Voltages, they are going to be put under pressure by Ersatztruppen. Ersatztruppen are relatively good at close range, actually, um, for their price. They're 10 cost each, and they have 5 HE, so yeah, not too bad. 
and uh, they're just going to completely overrun those voltages before they're in command radius and make them surrender, which is nice. Porsche Japan's Abwehr also took out one of the M5 half-tracks. But yeah, the Piper Cup, that ends up taking out the uh, Pack 40 or not taking out, but spotting it, sorry. And I'm assuming it's going to end up spotting this Pack 36 on the top side, which is definitely going to give uh, the M8 a lot of information as to where it needs to go. So if we go into Herr Robert's point of view, the recon's doing the job there. It might not stop the advance of the Ersatz, however, since there is a lot of them. Uh, these Fortune Makers are going to be looking for the 150 main, 50 meter range engagement against uh, the M5 half track there. Um, in the center of the map, there is a slight salient for Gonzo at the moment. He's finding himself a plus one. Porsche Megas are coming into that tree line, don't quite have the range, are going to try and run into range, coming under a lot of fire though, do manage to hide themselves, get the weapon jam, that's going to be enough. It opens up the ability to run into these voltages, and since the voltages are out of command radius again, there's a possibility that they may surrender here. Now we do see an M5A1 coming in with Nueve, and this is actually a really nice choice because the 50 cal enables Herr Robert to sort of pin um, the infantry at range. Also the Spitfire Mark 9 there pinning the Falsham Jaegers is, is really smart so um, great job by Herr Robert at the moment. Hasn't had the, the best of trades early on uh, since uh, Gonzo hasn't really lost much but um, has certainly stopped Gonzo from, from breaking through so that's a good start and mainly phase A for the French is all about just building up enough forces to make a concerted effort in, in a specific area and therefore this recon aircraft is, is really good for like identifying um, the weak points in the front line so uh, this Piper Cub could be absolutely crucial to the outcome of this game either way uh, meanwhile Gonzo is starting to push through the mid he has brought up some Fulsion Flammenwerfers um, to accompany his ersatz and this is a, a common thing um, you use the ersatz to engage an infantry squad and then you have the Fulsion Flammenwerfer come in afterwards and therefore engage uh, the same infantry squad and the infantry they're already fighting will generally aim at the ersatz first before engaging the Fulsion Flammenwerfer as long as it's done in that order and uh, therefore the flamethrower can be extremely effective oh a lovely shot there though by the pack 36 finds a really nice line of sight onto the M8 uh, which puts it in a very good position. The Erzaz troop and they're coming under fire by the M5 half track so that forces Gonzo to unload his Fulsion Panzer Abwehr early uh, but honestly those can probably move through this tree line get the 250 meter range onto the M5 half track and take that out that would be really really useful. Meanwhile these Fulsion Mig is absolutely ripping these voltages to shreds they are using all of their munitions getting both the uh, FG42s and G43s on target at the same time as the MG34, which is just the best case scenario for the Fallschirmjägers. As that's are engaging Nueve at range, uh, not the most ideal thing for Nueve, but um, on for Ersatz, but uh, since they're in hard cover, it's not going to be too bad. Uh, Spitfire still trying to strafe the Pack 36. I think uh, Herr Robert uh, maybe took his eye off the ball there. Um, it may be a bit frustrated that he did lose his M8 because of that. And on the Fulsion Panzer Abwehr, they fire a Panzerstreck, actually miss the M5 half track. That's not something you see very often with Fulsion Panzer Abwehr. Um, Gonzo just needs to be careful that he doesn't let them get too far ahead of themselves. This Fulsion Panzer Abwehr is going to take out one of the half tracks. I think that was the M5A1 um, that was accompanying the Nueve. So, a really, really important kill there, taking out the 50 cal half track, as that definitely does pin down infantry very quickly indeed. We do see the more AT guns coming in. I think Gonzo's kind of prepping for the larger armor pushes that occur towards the end of phase A and into phase B. And that's very smart from, from Gonzo just to make sure that he is uh, ready for that. These Volsche Megas are going to try and keep themselves hidden, get out of line of sight of this M5 half track. It's pretty important because they want to try and obviously gain more ground but also um, use their Panzerfaust if they can onto the M5 half track. In this case though, the Volsche is going to have to be uh, forced to fall back. Um, otherwise, the M5 half track has a chance to surrender though, since there is no command down on this bottom side. And Herr Robert will know that since the Volsheimjägers only have two star veterancy instead of three. Because they come in as standard with two star veterancy. So yeah, this AT gun that's joining in the mid, just probably to uh, safeguard against half tracks more than anything else. Another 
AT gun coming in on the top side again for half tracks. Uh, half tracks can become quite annoying to deal with uh, when you're relying on so much infantry. So Gonzo wants to get rid of those. Panzer 39 will definitely help in that matter as well. So that's really smart. Um, but an M5A1 going to be the perfect response to a Panzer 39. We'll defeat that at close range. So, yeah. So far, both players responding to each other's actions quite well. But um, Gonzo sitting with the plus one again, uh, counting up now to 300 points. Nothing too significant, especially considering how much time has passed in the game. But uh, still interesting to see. So Volshimegas, they're going to be coming in to reinforce. They uh, take up this building, which puts them in a really, really ideal location to deal with the Nueve. This M5A1, though, it's got a lot of work to do, and uh, it's kind of walking into a position that is incredibly difficult, because these Fortune Panzer Abwehrs and Panzer Tracks in general with 250 meter range is just really obnoxious when you can see, like, pretty much every half or every uh, tree line is, like, 250 meters away from the next. So it's almost perfect territory for Panzer Treks. Now in this case, back 36, that's going to start to get shots onto the M5A1. Looks like that was fast moving up the road. Uh, does not want to take that in engagement just yet, so backing that off is a, is a good idea. However, there is going to be needed some more infantry, and honestly that's something that Gonzo might be able to exploit throughout the game, is the limited infantry availability that the French do have. And since uh, the 91st Luftlander have so much themselves, mainly due to things like Ersatzstruppen, um, there's definitely something that is exploitable. So these voltages, they're going to be pinned down. There is now a 60mm mortar on the field that might be able to help uh, clean up this Pac-36. But before this M5A1 decides to get involved, I think it's going to be important to get that recon aircraft back in if he can. Because uh, then he can start to mortar the Pac-36, pin it down, while safely engaging the Panzer 39. At the moment, it looks like this uh, Pac-36 may cause problems. Falchion Panzer Abwehr again, reminding Herr Robert that there are Panzer Treks about. And that means he has to unload this infantry relatively early. And uh, try and sweep through these tree lines before getting ambushed. And the M5A1 still trying to engage the Panzer 39, but is on the brink of being pinned itself. Interesting though how all of the action is occurring on this top side whilst Gonzo slowly moves his forces on this bottom side to completely control the town. Spitfire Mark 9 coming in again for the strafing run. The M5A1 is being forced to fall back but here comes the Piper Cub and that's going to be looking to give targets to the 60mm mortar. Now the only issue with the 60mm mortar is it only has 900m range. That is just enough, I think, to hit this pack 36 if he wanted to. But he might have to move up a little bit into a dangerous location at some point. M8 is on its way. So that's going to be two vehicles now trying to face off against this Panzer 39. But this Panzer 39 is just being such a nuisance right now because it really does stop the advance of any of these half tracks. So the infantry engagements are just really, really difficult for Herr Robert right now. Ocean Panzer Abwehr, they're going to manage to sneak up and get into this tree line. Putting them onto return fire would probably be a good, good idea right now, so they don't accidentally engage at 100 meter range. Uh, but here we go again, Pack 36 engaging. I'm assuming the Panzer 39 is going to try and get involved again. At this range, um, the Pack 36 does have a chance to penetrate. It's not a very high chance, but it's still a chance. And you can see that it is slowly doing enough morale damage to force this M5A1 back. The other thing to consider is that uh, the 5 AP is enough to definitely kill an M8. Um, so that's something that Herr Robert's going to have to avoid. But the Pack 36 does get straight to death. So uh, that basically allows Herr Robert to continue like the 2v1. And strafing this Panzer 39 is also a very smart choice. Uh, so that he can safely engage without risking being shot back at himself. Um, so the 60mm uh, mortar there also helping out in that endeavour. The Pack 36 that is going to be spotted, I would assume, by Herr Robert, and if it is, then the 60mm mortar should be trying to take that out, and uh, Herr Robert is certainly on top of that. But yeah, look at this defensive line on the bottom side. If if Herr Robert really wants to make some ground down here, he's got a lot of work to do. This is Volschenjägers, Ersatzruppen, Panzertrecks, flamethrowers, AT guns. It's just all sorts of stuff. 
Mean meanwhile, Gonzo just contesting this top side in order to give him that little territory uh, gain. I mean, technically in the middle, this is also giving him territory because usually uh, the 50-50 would sit about here. And therefore, all of this extra ground gained in the mid is, is actually making a difference. Now, one thing that's interesting about uh, these flamethrowers is that they do sort of provide a frontline presence. Um, so that's something that Herobert is exploiting here against Gonzo. Um, half tracks are again falling. The Panzer Strex uh, doing the job, but that Fulshin Panzer Abwehr is going to get taken out. Also, the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr on the top side is gone. Uh, that's really, really interesting. This half track going down to the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr as well. But yeah, removing two Fulshin Panzer Abwehr is just really, really nice. And Gonzo's had enough of all of this airplay, so he's now brought in the Flak 36s. And he's going to be trying to use those moving into phase B to uh, stop. Um, these Spitfires from strafing his ground forces and also the recon uh, from spotting them. So the Panzer goes down there. Looks like that was taken out by the M5A1. Um, there has been a Kubel munition brought up, possibly to reload Panzer Shreks, I would assume, or maybe to repair any critical damage that occurred to units, but I'm pretty sure that was nothing like that occurred, so. Yeah, probably just to like reload Panzer Shreks and stuff. Anyway, the Stur 42 is getting involved. That's found line of sight onto one of these 60mm mortars, and, and getting a kill onto that would be really, really nice for Gonzo. But uh, as you can see, Herobot is certainly building up, and this is what I meant about moving into or moving from phase A to phase B. It's the real power point of the French, and at the moment, two Stuarts and an M8 may be enough to push through here. The main thing that will be worrying Herr Robert is, of course, his Volsian Panzer Abwehr squad, and spotting that and taking it out will be a priority of Herr Robert's at this moment in time. And this M5A1 is creeping up. We do see the M5 half tracks. They will also join the fray, most likely end up as Panzer Strike bait. Um, I like the addition of this off map. I think it will be uh, really, really useful for pinning down. Uh, units, especially if uh, Herr Robert guesses that this Fulshin Panzer Abwehr is still here, he might just off map it and then he'll be able to move forwards relatively safely. And this could cause like a nice breakthrough for Herr Robert on this top side because after the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr goes down, you're just looking at 150 meter range maximum for AT left on this side of the map. He's taken out the uh, packs that he knows of. And, um, yeah, it's just going to really help him out. So, here there is some Fulshin Megas in the town. It looks like uh, the off-map has been used to try and hit that. Then he's going to advance on it on the, with the Sappers, maybe even the M5 half-track. The, the flamethrowers might even get involved. Who knows? But uh, an M4A2 two-star is on the way. And Herr Robert's going to be looking to use that combined with the M5A1s to make a lot of ground. Oh, this M5A1 needs to be really careful. Ocean Panzer Abwehr just out of range, I would assume. And that is not good. Okay, they are going to be aiming and firing at the M5 half track, which reveals their location. Uh, Robert is going to take notice of that and does manage to get the 30 cows on target. So I wouldn't expect these Ocean Panzer Abwehr to be ignored for much longer. It really depends. Oh, here comes the HS129. Did mention HS129s and. Well, take out one of the Stuarts, but uh, it's going to go down in the process, so not really a great trade for Gonzo. Um, really, really smart reply there uh, with these three Spitfires. Fantastic job by those um, to kill off that HS-129 in a timely fashion uh, before it did too much damage. Um, Herr Robert is going to be off-mapping the Stur 42. I think a definite off-map onto the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr is necessary because... It's just putting so much pressure on this top side at the moment, and, and with that gone, uh, it's, it's just a free push through at the end of the day. And, and stunning the Stur 42 doesn't really affect the uh, power of your tanks. Um, yes, it may pin them down a little bit, but at the end of the day, um, your M4A2 is just going to end up killing the Stur 42 at close range. And we can see here that the Sapiers have moved into the town after the off map, but uh, due to there not being many in number, um, the sappers are going to be killed off and uh, Gonzo retains his position in the middle of the map here. He is actually going to reinforce that, most likely with pioneers at this phase. Um, there's also maybe some more Urzats on the way and another AT gun. This is going to be another pack 36. 
Uh, also see some panda tracks on the way. Uh, but once again, Fulshin Pads at Avia take out an M8 cavalry. That is eventually going to go down. This M4A2 does have two 30 cows and a 50 cow. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, those Fulshin Pads at Avia just not dealt with properly, and therefore it seemed like Care Robert really paid the price. And one of these infantry did go down before it unloaded. The off map ended up taking out the, the flak. Um, but with that Fulshin Pads at Avia now gone, it makes things 100 times easier. Because, again, Fulshin Pans at Abvir um, have the 250 meter range, whereas Fulshin Jaegers only have 150 meter range. And, and therefore, when they engage the infantry, the tanks can just cleanly push forwards and get the job done. Um, also, Herr Robert doesn't really need to be worried about the Stur 42, so um, can really start to exploit the position that he's in. Now what will happen is if we get to phase C, I would likely see more HS129s arriving. That was the second one, obviously the first one got shot down. But due to the lack of AA, I think Gonzo was uh, worried about committing his HS129 to a strike on this top side. Thankfully, due to the amount of ground that Gonzo holds on this bottom side, the push back on the top side won't be as significant uh, to the outcome of the game. Uh, Gonzo still sitting on the plus one though, ticking up nearly to 1,000 points, but this is such a close match at the moment and uh, could be anyone's game, especially if Herr Robert does make a move with all of this armour. The voltages here, they're pushing ahead. They are basically acting as recon to find the positions of enemy infantry and then allow the fire support to exploit that. Same deal with these sappers. It would be nice to maybe see some actual recon though on the ground uh, since the AA has denied the Piper Cubs for the most part um, since they were brought in. Um, so we can see a recon squad on the way, so that is good to see. Um, Sapo is going to be engaging the Pine or Fulshinpjörder, sorry, on that top side. Um, Fulshinpjörder is going to be engaging the Sappers. And more off map now coming down. That's going to end up taking out some Fulshinpjörders. It's going to pin down the Pioneers. Maybe allow these Sappers to get aggressive into the face of those, but uh, it looks like Herr Robert's going to be relying on the M5 half-track to make the surrender. Stur 42 does take out one of the half-tracks, that's quite nice. Ooh, Panzerstreck, can it get the job done? It's not pinned down just yet, it's aligning. It does get killed off before it can do the damage. Pack 36 also ends up getting hit very hard, and uh, I'm pretty sure that was maybe fire positioned, but generally machine guns aren't as effective when they're used as fire position. I, I don't know, maybe it could have just seen the Pack 36 but didn't end up killing it, which is quite unfortunate actually if it did actually have line of sight. Now this Pack 36 under fire by an M5 half track. We do see the HS129 coming in. You can see how important killing these M4s really is. And uh, that's something that, that Gonzo prioritized because he knows that Sherman is just the, the deadliest thing that Herr Robert has right now. Um, they can kill infantry very quickly, they can kill his tanks and armor, and uh, that's just a combination that is really, really brutal against uh, the 91st Luftlander. Now Gonzo is going to be bringing in a Stug 3, and that Stug 3 will be able to take care of the rest of the units that Herr Robert has. Herr Robert's now going to have to invest in a second M4A2, and uh, that's just going to kind of wait waste time, kind of delay the match, and that's exactly what Gonzo wanted to do with that HS129 strike. Better than that though, he actually managed to get it out alive without having it shot down, so that is really, really nice. He's starting to lose damage though, it gets pushed out of this town. Um, the sappers are causing a bit of a salient, we can see that the AA is being marked there as the Piper Cub comes up to try and find more information. Taking out these uh, AA pieces will definitely enable the Spitfires once again, and since Herr Robert has quite a lot of them on hand, um, it's you know quite likely that he wants to get rid of the AA as quickly as possible. But that AA, it is going to be attack moving um, forwards, so it might not get hit by this off map due to it taking quite a long time to fire. But uh, Herr Robert has brought in another of those, and even when they've used up all of their off-map strikes, they're still pretty effective units because although the gun's inactive, they do have the 50 cal and the 30 cal, like I mentioned previously. Now the voltages, uh, with the help of the M5A1, taking out some pioneers up here. Um, there is a stug on the main road that uh, these units are going to have to be worried about, but a three-star M4 uh, will definitely pose a big threat against the stug 3. Um, it's this pack 36 though, that may be the difference because at 500 meter range, 
um, or 300 meter range, sorry, it does have 20 AP because it can deploy itself a Steel Granata uh, 41, which is like a rocket that it can put on the like the end of the gun and uh, fire with really, really high penetration. So it'll be interesting to see um, if that actually comes about and if this Pack 36 can remain hidden. Uh, with the advance of, of Recon, however, that shouldn't be the case. Even just bringing in the Piper Cub and having it forced back uh, may make the, the difference. Uh, but either way, as the smoke disappears, the M4A1 opens up onto the Stug 3. It gets the trap will destroy, which means that Stug 3 is not going anywhere. That Stug 3 needs to basically kill the M4A2 or it is dead. And at the moment, I think the way it was trap will destroyed, oh my, meant that it was not going to kill the Stug 3, but it did. It actually found the kill, which is insane. Now the off map does come in and, and kill off the uh, AT gun there. And you can see that that infantry squad does get taken out. So we're now back to a 50-50. But that shot from the Stoke 3 was absolutely sublime. Like, that is perfect for Gonzo. Quite a lot of luck involved, I'm not going to lie. But still, definitely keeps this game extremely exciting. Um, 60mm mortar in the middle is going to try and deal with the Pack 36 so that the M5 half track and the M5A1 are unable to deal with a lot of this infantry. It looks like Gonzo is kind of being very aggressive with his infantry now towards the mid um, just to try and gain back a little bit of ground and stop a plus one in favour of um, Herr Robert. But uh, as we can see, um, the M5A1 came around the corner there, cleaned up the uh, Stug 3 since it was pinned. And uh, that's now going to enable Herr Robert to continue to try push through. There is now an AT gun on the way. That's going to be a Pack 40 plus an IG uh, 30. Actually, that's not an IG. That's the uh, Russian artillery uh, piece. That's but they're both coming in, and that's going to be trying to hold this breakthrough in its tracks. Um, otherwise. Gonzo could be losing a lot of ground very quickly and that's not what he wants. He wants to maintain this lead that he has, 1,054 points in Gonzo's favour and um, we'll have to wait and see if it's enough because currently Herr Robert's putting on a lot of pressure. We've moved into phase C. Can the HS129 save the day? It's going to be firing. It's going to kill off the M5A1 Stuart. Doesn't quite kill the M4A2. Now we see the Spitfires coming in. The ME109 has to be pretty careful here. It is going to get forced back by the Bofors. I'm not sure why another ME109 is coming in. I would just cut your losses here, Gonzo, and get out of there, because that's a lot of Spitfires. <laughs> and uh, both your ME109s are just easy pickings. Also, the HS129 coming around for another run. Uh, it does help like clean up the M4 there, but... Interestingly enough, one of the uh, ME109s actually got out alive. Will this HS129, however? This is such an important kill to get, and Herr Robert gets it. That is really, really nice, because now he is uh, unlikely to see another HS129 B3, I think. Um, unless, obviously, Gonzo gets a third. But I think that was the second one shot down there, which is quite nice. Now, I believe this uh, Pack 40 might have been the, uh, the reason that the M4 went down in the end, the uh, OP M4A2 that is. Um, but either way, um, interesting for sure. And uh, the Pack 40 ends up getting pinned by the Spitfires since the AA has gone down on this top side. It does enable these uh, Spitfires once again. And I mentioned that Herob had a lot of them. He's playing this very much like the, the first Panserna in that the first Panserna would use a Hurricanes to pin th stuff down on the floor. Uh, whereas in this case he's using Spitfires and it, it's really interesting to watch but here comes the uh, the, uh, the artillery that's going to try and clean up some of the Bofors so that the airs, the Air Force is enabled again for, for Gonzo but another really really aggressive push coming in here from here Robert he is going to be looking for a plus two because currently it's going to be a draw uh, based upon um, the score so Gonzo needs to kind of stop this in its tracks if he can and just delay a little bit longer so that a plus one is not enough to win or be or be drawn um, because in the Steel Division League you can get draws, right? Um, if it counts as a draw in game, it's a draw in the tournament. Um, whereas um, Gonzo obviously would like his win so he can maintain his position at the top of the league which is where he currently is. Um, ME109 G6 R6 is going to take out that 
Piper Cub, get rid of that recon. Uh, but look at this infantry, it's just been absolutely annihilated, forced to fall back here. Just so many half-tracks, so many tanks, and um, it's just something that Herr Robert's exploiting right now to force Gonzo out of his positions. Now the Fulgian Panzer Abwehr, it does manage to take out a half-track. I think ideally that would have wanted to be more patient, but probably couldn't have been due to the advance of the Fultagers. If it gets out alive though, that's going to be really quite risky uh, for these tanks moving forwards. Oh, there is a Flak 36 on the field, and that's a two-star veteran. See, can it kill the M5A1? Yes, it will. Poor little Stuart there takes an 88 to the face. Uh, will the uh, M4A2 go down as well? I don't think it will because it will be covered by the tree line there. But look at this. Some of these Erzatz troopers have uh, caused a little salient on the bottom side. We can see the aggression from Gonzo on the top here as well. He's brought in the Stur 42, accompanied by Grenadiers, and he's going to be trying to use that combination to make some ground up here. And since Herr Roberts kind of switched his entire focus to the mid now, rather than the top, uh, we can see that there is a limited amount of defenses here for Herr Robert, and I'm pretty sure at this moment in time, he's also going to have a limited amount of infantry remaining. So if Gonzo can use this opportunity where there's not many like half tracks and tanks defending the top side to clean up some of this infantry. I think it's going to be difficult for Herr Robert to basically replenish that. Either way, Marder 2 is going to be coming in uh, alongside this Flak 36 to cover that. We can see uh, Spitfires uh, coming up once again. They're going to be looking for the strafing runs onto these Grenadiers. But the Grenadiers are making back ground and it's, it's not going to be long if this continues until... Uh, Gonzo stops the plus one that Herr Robert has, but uh, interesting engagement here. ME109 does force back one of the Spitfires. ME109 um, does get forced back itself. This Spitfire might be able to get onto the back of that. There is, of course, this 88 that might help out. Oh, it does actually snipe that Spitfire from a distance. That was very, very interesting. Um, very, very nice to see. ME109 goes down. Uh, looks like the second one will probably escape due to the Spitfire being low on his Spano ammo. Um, but either way, um, this Stur 42 does get bailed out by the Sapurs. It uses its bazooka there um, to yeah, bail out the Stur 42, but uh, under the fire of the Pack 40, that is going to be enough to pin them down. And we also see the uh, artillery now getting involved onto the Bofors once again. But look at this push coming in on the bottom side. Herr Robert trying to use these M4A2s as aggressively as possible to support infantry. The only trouble I'm thinking is there's going to be a limited amount of infantry left soon. Maybe even for both sides actually. Um, both sides kind of gonna be bleeding a lot of men throughout this game. But um, these sapiers, they're gonna be quite effective. Um, they have of course their 20 HE power TNT. And that does allow them to clean up Bolshemegas and Erzats at close range very efficiently. Um, same in the forest here. Cleaning up these uh, Bolshemegas will be uh, very good. And that will take away the veterancy from a lot of the units in the town. We can see the off-map has come down onto the Black 36. Actually forces back the Marder 2 as well. Uh, but on this top side, uh, the artillery starting to pin the Bofors has forced it back. That may open up the opportunity for the infantry to run forwards. And here with the sapers being pinned, they've been surrendered. Recon doesn't provide any sort of frontline presence. So the next objective will be to take out this half track. And then even more ground will go in favour of Gonzo up there. But it's down on this bottom side where Gonzo really needs to be worried right now. Because the Flammenwerfer, it might be able to clean up this sapers squad. But... Um, this, there's definitely a limited amount of infantry down here, but that is a very, very nice surrender there for the Jägers. And uh, there is only one unit of sapers that is full strength left to push into this town. And, and since it's uh, gone to plus zero on both sides, so evened out, um, you can see that Gonzo will take the victory in nine minutes. So, <laughs> such a close game. It really is. Stur 42 going to be used after it gets repaired uh, to take out this M5 half track. The sappers didn't finish the job, so the Stur 42 quite happy to just continue forwards. Now we see a Stug 3 coming in. 
There is an M4A2, a command M4A2 coming in to like stop uh, this Stug 3 or any armor from pr progressing, but uh, a two star Stug versus a M4A2. If the Stug 3 gets off the first shot, the M4A2 might actually go down, like we saw previously with the Stug 3G actually taking out uh, one of the M4s, which was obviously quite lucky, like I mentioned before. Uh, but either way, Sappers, they're going to be taking out a unit of infantry. There is, I believe, uh, more units on the way here, some more pioneers most likely for Gonzo. But look at these pioneers. They've actually managed to get right up into the face of the voltages, get forced back by the flamethrowers, though. Flamethrowers are going to try and run them down and, and maybe try and take them out. Oh, but the pioneers get the grenade off, and that is really, really good for Gonzo now enables those pioneers to continue that pressure into the town uh, but as long as this remains um, you know 51% instead of 52 for Herr Robert Herr Robert's going to end up losing and is going to end up needing a plus 2 in order to win which is going to be a hard task against Gonzo who still has infantry up his sleeve and this Marta 2 is coming in to assist this bottom side that smoke that the fl uh, flamethrowers dropped is going to be a problem but the Marder 2, uh, once it gets close enough, will be able to do a lot of damage to the M8. M8 will have a chance to kill the Marder, of course, due to the low armor value, but still. I have to wait and see if that goes in favor of Herr Robert or Gonzo. Uh, Pioneers are engaging the Sapeurs at range, which is not too bad for Pioneers, since Pioneers do actually have the MG34, whereas the Sapeurs don't really have a machine gun themselves. These Volschemjägers though, they're dying off. Flak 36 is trying to help out still in the middle. The uh, Panzer 39, I believe, got internal fragmented or something because it's run out of, ammuni run, run out of ammunition. Sorry. Um, Stug 3 trying to advance up here. Grenadiers going as well. Um, the Grenadiers, if they get into this tree line, can probably snipe this M4A2 with a Panzerfaust. So interesting that those Grenadiers are being told to walk upwards. They're just going to get killed off pretty much instantly. Spitfire's perfect timing to take on this HS129. But as the Spitfires focus on that, the ME109 G6 R6 comes in, takes out one of the Spitfires. Can it take out another? We'll have to wait and see. Bofors is in the middle of the map now instead of the top side. And uh, that could make a big difference. Stick 3 is going to come around the corner here. Pop that M5 half track, I would assume. And now it's going to be looking for the attack onto the M4A2. This... Uh, Fulsham Jaeger may be used better, or M4A2 is aiming first, ammo storage hit, resets the aim of the uh, Stug 3, Stug 3 does manage to get the shot off though and it's a weapon jam, which is really nice for Gonzo, internal fragments helps out even more, looks like that, that M4 is going down, and if that's gone, then it opens up the infantry to push forwards once again. We can see, however, that uh, Herr Robert has found himself the plus one. It's going to still be a draw at this point. Still work to be done on both sides. And <laughs> there is five minutes, or six minutes, sorry, left on the clock. This is absolutely insane. Both players just taking this down to the wire at the moment. Obviously, Herr Robert's going to be unlikely to be able to win at this point. Would need a plus two in order to do so. But at the same time... He doesn't want to lose. You know, he'd rather take a draw than lose. So, um, is fighting for that draw right now. ME109 looks like it's going to end up going down to this Spitfire. It is. Uh, but this Stug 3, how much ground has that made on the top side? Taking out that M4 was so important. And now the Pioneers and Forstumjägers sort of taking control of the territory. Um, it's just going to secure it. And the Volschemjägers here moving up is going to take out the M5 half-track at close range with the Panzerfaust. Um, also with the Stug 3G coming in in the mid. Um, that's going to prevent the half-track from causing that salient that it was. Um, also might end up taking out the M4A2 in the process. Um, but I'm pretty sure Gonzo's out of infantry. You could see he reinforced with like two Volschem pioneers right next to each other. Or these are just Pioneer Führer, sorry. Um, but yeah... <laughs> Interesting how he's he's now having to rely on that infantry, but at this point, I'm pretty sure Herr Roberts in the same boat are going to end up having to rely on basically recon and uh, and bazookas in this case. This bazooka might end up taking out the Stug three, but it won't matter uh, because the pioneer, of course, in the right position to take out the bazooka afterwards, and the bazooka even misses, which is devastating because that Stug three is going to 
finish them off nice and easy. HS129 gets a track wheel damage onto the M4A2, which is now going to enable the engagement from the Stoke 3. Um, we can see another AT gun on the way as well. And Gonzo's actually found himself a plus two at the end of the game here. This huge salient on the top side is just making such a big difference. Jeep's coming in with a bazooka. It's going to end up right in the face of the Pioneers. So basically, Gonzo's well aware of what these units are. That bazooka even ends up getting killed. These Falschmjägers can try and kill off this bazooka in the open. And uh, as much as Herr Robert's trying to prevent the bleeding on the top side, he just doesn't have the infantry to stop um, these forces from from being a problem. And, and now he's even forced to bring in an M8 spy that is uh, using the mid reinforcement point because the top reinforcement point has been denied. And uh, yeah, Gonzo had just absolutely taking control of this game on the top side uh, towards the end here. Herr Robert tried so damn hard to break through first in the top and then in the mid and I think Gonzo identified that when Herr Robert pushed in the mid that he'd left the top side lightly defended and took complete advantage of it and it's just incredibly smart play I mean both players do did really really well throughout this one and it's just been an incredible match to watch honestly um, really really coming down to the wire really of course it's a plus two now and Gonzo is going to run away with the victory but at the end of the day Herr Robert was so close to making a breakthrough and, and there were times like when that Stug 3 killed the M4 that uh, it could have ended up the other way around. The Stug 3 could have gone down and Herr Robert could have broken through more uh, more uh, convincingly and that would have just made like all the difference at the end of the day. Um, but here we come with, uh, I think these are probably Fusiliers at this point, yeah. So Fusiliers now being required to hold the front line since there is a severe lack of infantry left uh, from Gonzo's side of things but uh, the M8 spy that did come in has just run into the face of the Stoke 3 and gets taken out um, so that's not great we did see one of the Fusiliers though they went down to the bazooka from the Sappers um, so that was a, uh, a strong kill there by Herr Robert but uh, with his limited in infantry availability left um, you can see they're struggling now to hold this town after taking it. And uh, yeah, we're almost at a plus three now for Gonzo. His uh, 91st Luftlander just basically allowing him to lose more infantry but still have more available. And um, these Fusiliers in the late game are just too much for Herr Robert to deal with. He only has access to like two men squads, maybe even just command squads like this one. And uh, at the end of the day, Fusilier squads are basically mainline infantry that have recon capabilities. Yes, they don't hold the front line forwards, but um, he's got the vehicles to do that, to back it up. So now one minute left on the clock. It looks like it's going to go down to the full 40 minutes, which is absolutely insane. M4A2 going to be engaging the Stoke 3. The M4 AT will struggle to penetrate a Stug 3 at max range, whereas a Stug 3 actually has like much higher AP value, so will penetrate the 10 armor much easier. Marder alongside Volschenfjeller Erlig and the Fusiliers will be trying to take on those voltages and take them out. The last shot should do the job. It actually missed, so never mind. And look at all these Spitfires, guys. Nice air display, but unfortunately, not quite enough. Like they can strafe this infantry all day long, but unfortunately for Gon or for Herr Robert, it's just too late, and uh, the time is up. Five, four, three, two, one, and Gonzo is going to take that victory. What an incredible game! Forty minutes, the full forty. Gonzo with the 3,585 kills to 3,325 losses. That's how close it was. They were only like 200 odd kills off each other. And that is nothing at all in the grand scheme of things. Herr Robert, like I mentioned, had chances to break through. I think one mistake was not using his off map to clean up the Fortune Pans Abwehr that he knew was there because it had killed multiple of his half tracks. Kind of disrespected it, ended up losing like an M8 to it as well. And 
yeah, it, it, did, it did affect his ability to push on that top side. The other thing, though, is that Gonzo made really good use of those Panzerschrecks. And if we jump over to, like, kills and losses, I'm pretty sure we'll see that. Uh, but anyway, the Spitfire Mark 9s, they came out strong. This one killing out two ME109 G6R6s, um, two Pack 36s as that's Stropen. Um, these Spitfires and how Herr Robert used them was very similar, like I mentioned, to how he uses the first Panzerna. And I think that's obviously the playstyle that he's used to. So um of making good use of that m5a1 did come in took out a few units but the kills in the early game really didn't go in favor of herobert at all gonzo really took control of the match early and therefore made it difficult for herobert to come back hard in phase b uh, when he otherwise would have like been able to just smash through if he'd kind of traded equally early on um, but you can see a lot of the kills came into the late game. This M4A2 ended up killing a Marta 2 and a Flak 36. Um, I'm surprised some of these M4s didn't do better, but um, we can see that one did. And again, this M4A2 actually ended up getting the kill onto the HS129. That's incredible. That's due to the 50 cal, most likely. Um, in terms of losses, Ocean Panzer Abwehr, they did a lot of damage. Stuart 42 was really nice as well. But yeah, this one, taking out two M5 half-tracks and the M8 was just not ideal. These HS129 strikes, I was a little bit concerned after the first one because it killed off a M5A1 and then got shot down. That was not ideal. But this one, taking out both an M4A2 and the M5A1, the M4A2 at a critical point uh, was very, very important because it delayed Herr Robert's push so much. Um, for at least an extra few minutes that really meant like moving into the late game like that that mattered quite a lot um this flak 36 i loved that long range snipe against that spitfire that was really really awesome to watch uh but these volume is certainly coming out on top and the stuk 3g there taking out the m4a2 and the m8 spy towards the end uh broke open that top side and almost pushed gonzo to a plus three at the end of the game incredible incredible game really really awesome one to watch i was not disappointed and i uh, hopefully you guys weren't either um hopefully you've enjoyed the video i will be moving on to a second game between these two players in the next video but until then thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye